This is late edition, the last word in Sunday talk. I certainly believe in my heart of hearts that he's going to go to heaven. Deciding Saddam Hussein's fate. We'll get perspective from Kuwaiti Foreign Minister Mohammed El Sabah. Country and its next door neighbor Kuwait are still very much dealing with the scars left over by Saddam Hussein. During his visit to Washington this week, I spoke with Kuwait's Foreign Minister Mohammed El Sabah about the former Iraqi dictator and much more. Foreign Minister, welcome to Washington. Thanks very much for joining us. Thank you. What went through your mind when you saw these pictures of Saddam Hussein in his underwear on that British tabloid newspaper? Well, I was a little bit uh, disappointed that the press was picking up on an issue of uh, not really major relevance. Uh, yesterday, Wolf, we buried five of our people uh, who, we, who uh, we discovered in Iraqi grave, uh, mass graveyards in Iraq. Five Kuwaitis. Five Kuwaitis. Uh, that's the big story, really. The sort of horrors that Saddam inflicted on his people and our people. He invaded your country, that's your right. small country, in August 1990. Mm -hmm. Occupied it for months until the war uh, started in January 1991. What do you hope happens to him? To get uh, a fair trial and to record it in history that those who committed atrocities against their own people and they, against their neighborhood will pay the price for that. Do you hope he uh, gets the ultimate pri price, which is the death sentence? I cannot imagine. Uh, I think that he's going to go to hell. Uh, what happened to him at this earth is really uh, of, a, of a minor consequences, but uh, I certainly believe in my heart of hearts that he's going to go to hell. You hate his guts, don't you? Um, he is a villain. Uh, I cannot. It's, it's not a matter of hate. Uh, he he destroyed his country. He destroyed his neighborhood. He destroyed uh, the reputation of Arabs and, and Muslims. Uh, he he gave a bad impression about us. Do you have any doubts about the just cause, the justness of this war that the U.S. and its allies launched more than two years ago? For the first time in Iraq history, now we have a, an, a free elected Iraqi government. For the first time in Iraq history, that they have freely determined their future by going to the polls and casting their votes. Uh, this is a monumental moment. Uh, it's going to be recorded in history, and the whole region will, will be appreciate the American and the British and the Allied position uh, uh, during this war. So, despite the enormous casualties, the deaths, the costs the political ramifications, you feel that Kuwait is more secure now than it was while Saddam Hussein was in power? Absolutely, and I think that the uh, Saddam has turned Iraq into a major, a massive uh, uh, graveyard, uh, as we see in this, uh, the, 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 the continuous uncovering of these mass graveyards uh, that we see in Iraq. So, to get rid of him and to give Iraq back their t freedom is, a, is a something that is worth doing. Even though no weapons of mass destruction were found? He is himself a weapon of mass destruction. Not anymore, he's not. Well, he's a behind the... No, but his, his, his thoughts, his ideas, his uh, theology, his uh, ideology is the thing that uh, we should fight, always fight. There have the been, fascist there have been some, some terrorist incidents in Kuwait in recent months. How concerned are you that the insurgency inside Iraq could spill over into Kuwait? No, uh, the, it's very isolated instances and these uh, these acts were carried out by a few individuals. They have no absolutely no support within the population and uh, I don't see that, uh, of course, we are concerned that the violence in Iraq will spill over in neighboring countries. For that reason, we are meet, meeting on a regular basis, the neighboring countries uh, with Iraq. Uh, we just read, met in Istanbul, Turkey, to uh, help Iraqis to re restore stability and security in Iraq. Do you think the other neighboring countries, like Syria, for example, and Saudi Arabia, are doing everything they can to prevent foreign fighters from going into Iraq? I think it's not in anybody's interest to see this, uh, this uh, violence uh, and this instability continue in Iraq. Is Syria uh, uh, part of the problem or part of the solution from the, for, the, for the insurgency? Syria is going through a tough period. They have uh, 
President Bashar al-Assad, uh, uh, he announced a, a major reform program and we believe when he said that he's going to secure the borders, his borders with Iraq. Iraq now is ruled by a new government, elected January 30th, take, taken office. It's a government led by Shiites, Iraqi Shiites, and Iraqi Kurds, very small number of Iraqi Sunnis. I believe this is the only Arab government that is led by Shiites and Kurds, not led by Sunnis. How do you feel about that? No, well, we don't look at things that, in terms of the sectarian makeup of a, of, a, of a government. What matters to us is what sort of ideas, what sort of philosophy, what sort of program they have for, for their country. And so far they have uh, said the right things. They are talking about a free, democratic Iraq, unified Iraq. And this is really what matters. So when you saw that picture of the foreign minister of Iran, coming to Baghdad, meeting with the new Prime Minister, Ibrahim al-Jafri of, of Iraq. Was that a, a, of any concern to you that Iraq and Iran now seem to be moving closer together? Do you think that I would, uh, uh, would be happy to see a war resumed between Iraq and Iran? Of course, any reconciliation between the neighborhood would be good for Kuwait. Let's talk a little bit about uh, Kuwait specifically. Kuwait played a key role in allowing the U.S. and coalition forces to move into Iraq to get rid of Saddam Hussein. I was just there a few weeks ago. Kuwait's still playing a key role as a forward base for the U.S. and its coalition partners. Is there anything on the horizon that will change that? In other words, your military cooperation with the United States? Not at all. I, uh, I'm here to continue the strategic dialogue between the United States and Kuwait. Uh, we are a very strong allies. We are a major non-NATO ally. And I had a very good discussion with the American, uh, with members of the American, especially American Go Congress as well. One of the irritants in the U.S.-Kuwaiti relationship involves, I think, about 12 Kuwaiti citizens who are detainees at the U.S. military base at Guantanamo Bay in Cuba. Are there 12? That's right. You want them released and sent back to Kuwait? No. We want justice. We want, we want them to have their day in court. Just as we would like to see Saddam have his day in court, we would like to see our Kuwaitis have their day in court. What, you, what specifically have you asked the Bush administration to do? That we will try them. Uh, Send them back to Kuwait? Put them on trial uh, to the extent, the fullest extent of the law. And if they prove to be uh, guilty, they have to serve a uh, jail sentence. You don't trust the U.S. justice system no, to deal with them? Absolutely, we trust it. For that reason, we are asking the Americans to put them on trial, be it in here in the United States or in Kuwait. But not simply just hold them without charges in, that's, in Guantanamo that's, Bay. Exactly. That's, that's not really the American justice that we know. There was a dramatic development in Kuwait in recent days, namely allowing women, Kuwaiti women for the first time, the right to vote and to run for office. Give us your perspective on what has happened. It's not going to take place until 2007, but it's still a significant development. Well, uh, there have been numerous bills that have been introduced by our parliament throughout the years, for the past 30 years. But our parliamentarians have learned the tricks of parliamentary tactics from your Congress uh, very well. They, have, uh, they tend to bury these bills in, 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 in committees. His Highness back in 1999, the Emir of Kuwait, forced the issue to be uh, to the floor and, uh, to f and he forced a, a, a vote. We were defeated by just two votes back in 1999. Six years later, uh, we, uh, we were able to, uh, to convince everybody that this is about time to get universal suffrage in Kuwait. And thank God, uh, uh, and it is, uh, it is a momentous moment. His Highness, the Emir, is... Uh, extremely pleased uh, that uh, this happened uh, during this, this year. And so there's no going backwards. It will happen in 2007. Women will have full equal rights to vote, to run for office in Kuwait. It is the law of the land now. Uh, there is a universal suffrage. All Kuwaitis now are participants in shaping the future of their country. You think this will happen in Saudi Arabia as well? I think the Saudis mentioned uh, something about allowing women to uh, participate in the next municipality election. And this is a major step forward as well. Foreign Minister, welcome to Washington. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much. Well, coming up.